Hello and welcome to another video on Inkscape. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at tile clones and the effects we can achieve with them. Amongst other things we can get this halftone effect, we can put objects around circles, we can create uh, logarithmic spirals and just general random tiled effects. Stick with us and we'll run through some of the options. So covering tile clones took a little bit longer than expected, so I've broken this video down into two halves. This is part one, and part two will follow. So to get started with tile clones, we need to open up a tile clone dialog box. To do this, we go up to Edit, come down to Clone, and then across to Create Tiled Clones. So this presents us with a box, and in our box we've got several tabs which control elements of the effect that we're trying to create. Symmetry, we're just going to be looking at simple translation today, but there are other options that you can use. If you want to learn more about these, you can go up to Help at the top, go into the Inkscape manual, and you can bring up, and if you look under Tiling and Symmetry tab, it'll explain what the different symmetries are that you can use. We're just going to stick with simple translation for today. Below that, we've got applying tiled clones so we can either do it by rows and columns or we can do it by width and height so to demonstrate this i've created a square box the square is just 100 by 100 millimeters and i've created a circle which has a radius of six millimeters so 12 by 12. so if we start with rows and columns we can create a 10 by 10 matrix of tiles if we're going to create something we need to first um, select the item that we want to duplicate. Once we've got our item selected we can press create and that creates us a 10 by 10 matrix of these circles. You may have noticed that this uh, top tile is brighter than the rest that's because I've reduced the opacity so we can see the box through the clones and when we create a matrix of clones, it sticks a, a cloned tile over the top of our original item. So if we move the clone away, you can see the original item underneath. Let's move that back a minute. So one interesting thing is that if we adjust the original item, it'll adjust all of the clones. Obviously to get to the original item, if we move this one out of the way, so I can select the one underneath. You can then actually um, press Control Z to pop it back on top. But because we've got the one underneath selected, which is the original tile, we can now adjust it and all the rest will follow suit. So we'll just back step a bit. So that's using rows and columns. The next box down is height and width. So if we change to this one and now press Create, it creates just enough tiles to cover the area that we've stipulated. So as you can see, we've got a little bit of overlap, but it's covered the whole 100 by 100 square. When we create uh, tiled clones, it works on the bounding box. So it goes right to the edge of the boundary. So if we've got a stroke, it'll go to the edge of the stroke. And if we don't have a stroke, it'll go to the edge of the path. So if we hold down shift and press the X to get rid of the stroke, you'll see that it's now left gaps in between each of them. If you press create, you'd expect it to close all the gaps up. But if we look down here, we've got a tick box that says use save size and position of the tile. If we untick this and then create, it does what we expect it to do and closes all the gaps. So if you're getting unexpected results when you're using tile clones, Come and have a look at this box and see if it's still ticked. What else have we got down at the bottom? We've got reset. So when we're going through and changing elements of our on our tabs, we can come down and press reset, and that resets all the values. We've got remove, which removes the effect. So we can create again. We've got unclump. This just adds a random element to the tiling. So you can keep applying this to try and get an effect that you like. So we've covered symmetry, so let's move along and take a look at shift. So shift is how much the tiles are moved 
um, when each each clone is created. So if we just come up, we just drag out a rectangle. Uh, we go back to rows and columns, do 10 by 10, create. Actually, let's put a stroke on there. So if I hold down shift, click on the black, we can add a stroke in so we see what's happening. So as you can see, we've created this 10 by 10 matrix of tiles. I go to our selection tool. Now we can adjust how much the tiles are shifted across. So at the moment, it's just shifted across by the width of the uh, tile, the original tile. So each, each iteration, it's shifted by the width of one tile. Same as going down. So we, we can add in an extra percentage. So we can add an extra 10% to the X per row. And press create. Oh, sorry, I've done 100%. So it's shifted it across by another whole tile space. So if we've made that back to 10 and then press create. So now it's shifting it across by 10% extra. So we can do, if we get rid of it on that one, we can do it on the X per, on the Y per row, sorry. So we can add 10 here, create, and that just spaces it. So if we wanted even spacing between our tiles, we can put, 10% on the Y shift in the rows, and we could add 10% to the X shift in the columns. So we get this even spacing effect. So that's the X and Y shifts and adding percentages to them. But we've also got at the end randomize. This just adds in a random element. So if we, for example, 10% on the X shift, randomize that by 10%, you get a random shift of 10% in the X. We could do the same for the Y. To get this random tile effect. Um, what else have we got? We can look at, we get rid of those for a minute. So down here we've got exponent. Exponent, um, is a power. So if you think of x squared, the two above the x is the exponent. So anything greater than one causes things to diverge, get further apart, and anything less than one causes them to converge, get closer together. So we could change this to 1.5, create, zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're doing. So as you can see, they start getting gradually further and further apart. If we just remove that effect, put that back to one. Under exponent, we've got alternate. This just alternates which way the shift goes. So if we click on alternate and press create. So to start with, it's getting 10% further apart, then 10% closer together, then 10% further apart, 10% closer together. So you can do that on both of them to get this kind of effect. Accumulate, the difference in the shifts gets summed up each time. So it kind of works a little bit like exponent. So if we did accumulate, they get further apart with each iteration. So we just do the accumulate on both so you can see the effect. So let's accumulate on both. The next, next um, line down is exclude tile. And what I said about when we shift things, we shift it by the width of the tile plus the extra. So up here we've put 10% for the Y shift in the rows. So if we exclude the tile, we just have the 10%. So if we get rid of, we get rid of the accumulate and tick the exclude tiles, what happens is you get this overlapping effect. So it's just moved the next tile by 10% rather than by the width of the tile and 10%. So this creates this overlapping effect. So this effect becomes more important when we're doing other things. Um, when we get onto rotation, we can use this to create circles, which I'll cover shortly. But for now, we get rid of that, press create, get back to where we were. So 
the next column along is scale. Now all these um, different tabs all work very similarly. Some of them have got different um, elements. So scaling works the same. We can add 10% to the scale on the X for the columns and 10% in the rows for the Y and press create, they get bigger. So what we can do is if we go over to shift, we could add in um, accumulate to increase our spacing. And now when we look at it, the spacing increases at a similar rate to the size of the tiles. So we can see this increased size. So we take off the accumulate and we remove the scale. So we're back to our original size. So in addition, to the things that we've covered already, the randomize, the exponent, the alternate, and the accumulate. We've also got this extra element here, which is base. If we hover over it, so we can create logarithmic spirals. So this is when we're doing um, rotation. We can rotate it round, add in a base, and that, that gives us the, um, the ability to create spirals. So we'll leave that one for the time being and move on to rotation. So rotation is quite simple. We've got an angle per row, angle per column, and the randomize element. And then we've got alternate and accumulate. So if we do a 10 degree rotation in the rows, press create, we get this effect where it increases the rotation <coughs> every row. We can add a 10 degree rotation to our columns as well gives us this rather nice effect. You can add, add a random element if you wanted to. It just, yeah, randomizes it. We've got alternate. So we get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. So we've got this, this uh, 10 degree rotation building up. If we come in and press alternate, what happens is it rotates one way and then rotates back the other way. So you get this, this alternating pattern coming down. Accumulate works exactly the same way. The rotation just gets bigger and bigger. With rotation, when we rotate an item, let's just let's get rid of that so we can. So with rotation, we're rotating each element around its rotational center. So if we remove this, and click on our original object to bring up rotation handles and the rotational center, we can move our rotational center. So now when we rotate, it rotates around the rotational center. If we wanted to create a circle, we just want a single row or a single column. So we can make a row of 10 items. Uh, if we wanted 10 items evenly spaced around a circle, we need 360 divided by 10, which would be 36. So we make each angle 36 degrees. If we go back to shift, we want to exclude the tile. So this keeps it in the same place. It's rotating around the same spot. So you'll get each tile will be in the same place. So it just rotate around one uh, 36 degrees each time and place a, a tile. What I've just noticed is we've still got an X and a Y shift. So we get rid of those. So now in shift, all we've done is tick the exclude tile box. In the scale, we've got nothing. And in rotation, we've got 36 degrees. And we've got a row or 10 rows and one column. So now we're going to rotate 10 items around the rotational center. So if we click create. So now you can see that we've got these 10 items evenly spaced. If we moved our rotational center, put create, we can space them out a little bit more. Once we've rotated an item, now they, they're, they're set in their places, we can actually grab the rotational center and move it and we can rotate our original tile and all the clones will copy. So, so this allows us to tweak the appearance of our circle of objects. 
sometimes when you create something it doesn't look quite right so a little bit of rotation and adjustment can make a big difference so like i said earlier we can do this either with a column or we can do it with a row so if we came down and changed it to um, 10 columns and one row we'd have to change 36 up here we can get rid of that one we go back to shift both the exclude tiles are ticked so if we press create now uh, this is where i haven't moved the rotational center so we remove or move the rotational center down and press create then we get the circle again but this time we're working with columns instead of rows but you get the same effect so the only other thing i wanted to show you about this was when i was I said about we've got this base element so we can change things with a base so if we say change the base to six change it on both of them keeps the shape of the item consistent if you scale it so we we'll scale each of these by say four per row oh and our rows need our rotation on the row So sorry, so we're back to 10 rows, one column. We've got a 36 degree rotation in for each row um, in scale. I've made it now scale by four, 4% uh, 4 for scaling X and Y in every row. And I've changed the base to six and I've changed the base in both columns and rows. If you change it in just one, you get distortion of the shape. So when you're doing bases, Unless you want distortion of the shape, change both at the same time and then it'll scale the shape evenly. So now if we press create, we get this spiral effect happening. And this is one you really need to play with um, until you achieve the result you want. Like I say, you could just add in more rows to extend the spiral. But I'll leave that one for you to play with. So I think we're going to have to leave it there for this video. In the next video, we'll take a look at the rest of the tabs. So we'll be looking at uh, blur and opacity, colour and trace and i'll be showing you how you can use trace to create a mosaic picture from a photo we'll also take a look at how we can create the half tone effect so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video